Mankind has already attained several milestones in the field of modern space exploration. We have put several humans on the surface of the moon, sent unmanned space probes to foreign planets, and are currently even making plans to permanently colonize other celestial bodies. In view of present and future achievements, however, we should not forget that the foundations of manned spaceflight were not laid out of pure scientific interest, but rather because of the political turmoil of the time. In order to prove to their hated adversary that their own nation possessed the most advanced technology of the time, the United States and the Soviet Union showed little regard for casualties during the Cold War. Today, we'd like to join you in taking a look at a somewhat lesser known side of the race to space. We take a look at the stories of some Soviet cosmonauts, which raise the critical question of how much human suffering is acceptable for the sake of technical progress. Want to join us on our galactic journey through the vastness of space? Then don't forget to subscribe to Simply Space and activate the bell to never miss one of our contributions again in the future. Feel free to show us with a thumbs up that we can keep you engaged with our videos. A Galactic Show of Force At the end of the 1960s, the Cold War had reached a new peak. With the 50th anniversary of the Russian Revolution fast approaching, Soviet head of state Leonid Brezhnev decided to emphatically demonstrate the technological superiority of communism to the rest of the world. Specifically, Brezhnev decided that his nation's 50th anniversary celebration should be enhanced by a galactic event. The plans called for two Soviet space capsules to rendezvous in space, with a cosmonaut climbing from one into the other. Such an ambitious maneuver had never been accomplished by any other nation. Cosmonaut Vladimir Komarov was chosen to crown the triumph of Soviet spaceflight in this way. However, some serious problems soon arose during the preparation of his media circus. The technicians responsible agreed that it would be practically impossible to complete the required spacecraft by the 50th anniversary of the Russian Revolution. Yuri Gagarin, the first man in space and Komarov's replacement, was also aware of this problem. After the experienced cosmonaut examined the new spaceship under a magnifying glass, he recognized no less than 200 serious deficiencies within it. A manned mission aboard this half-baked vehicle would have inevitably run into serious danger. However, since Brezhnev was eager to have the show take place at any cost, none of the engineers dared to draw the head of state's attention to the spacecraft's shortcomings. Only Gagarin summoned up the courage to send Brezhnev a letter in which he insisted that the planned schedule be postponed. The urgent request of the cosmonaut, however, was to fall on deaf ears in the ranks of the government. Although Komarov knew that his spaceflight was tantamount to a death sentence, he refrained from jumping off the mission, for the cosmonaut knew that in that case, his good friend Yuri Gagarin would have been chosen to fly to his certain doom. A Fatal Maneuver The mission put into action on April 23, 1967, was thus doomed to failure from the start. Even during the first hours in space, the spacecraft's onboard technology exhibited countless malfunctions. The second capsule, which was to follow Komarov into space and then be boarded, was in fact never to leave Earth. Since the Soviet Union covered up the exact details of the incident meticulously, the world public refers above all to intercepted messages between the cosmonaut and the planetary command center that the US Secret Service intercepted secretly. Komarov is said to have told the Soviet staff on the ground that he would surely die. Afterwards, the spaceman said goodbye to his distraught wife in a tearful voice. Finally, the inevitable catastrophe happened. Komarov's spaceship failed completely and fell from the sky. During the last moments of his life, the cosmonaut is said to have shouted angrily and uttered wild insults against those responsible for the mission. In 1967, however, Komarov's death represented only one of four tragic accidents. A few months earlier, three U.S. astronauts had suffocated after a fire started in their space capsule. Mystery of the Deceased Cosmonauts After the accident became public, 
the government declared Komarov a martyr, with the Soviets announcing that the cosmonaut was the first spaceman in national history to die during a manned mission. According to rumors, however, this official count does not correspond to the real factual situation. Several Soviet cosmonauts had already died before Yuri Gagarin was celebrated as the first man in space. However, the corresponding reports were never confirmed on the official side. Shortly after the USSR succeeded in sending the first man-made satellite into orbit in 1957, rumors grew that a manned Soviet space program was also imminent. Some Western media outlets subsequently even reported that the Soviet Union had already sent some humans into space, but that many of the participating cosmonauts had died. In 1959, the Austrian Hermann Oberth hit the headlines when he claimed that a Soviet spaceman had died in space during a manned spaceflight. The rocket pioneer would not reveal, however, where he had obtained this information. Another report that fueled the stories about the deceased cosmonauts, however, came from the Soviet Union itself. An article published by a Russian newspaper in October 1959 described how several Soviet astronauts had been sent into space without ever returning to Earth. Although these mysterious stories cannot be proven beyond doubt, it's clear that the Soviet Union has repeatedly sent space travelers into space and tried to sweep failures under the carpet. As later became known, these included two failed rocket launches in the early 1960s, which pursued the original goal of bringing unmanned spacecraft to the realms of Mars and Venus. 311 Days in Space To this day, People are divided as to whether these cosmonauts, who allegedly fell victim to their nation's lust for success, really existed. While many people believe that the reports in question are nothing but sensationalist conspiracy theories, others are convinced that the deadly space flights actually took place. While we cannot establish beyond doubt the myths surrounding the deceased space travelers, there is no question that the unique story of Sergei Krikalev really took place. In the summer of 1991, the Soviet Union was on the verge of its final disintegration. Krikalev, however, was unaware of the turmoil that was taking place in his earthly homeland. In fact, at that time, Krikalev was about 220 miles above the Earth's surface, working on the Mir space station. Although the cosmonaut was initially unaware of the chaos in the Soviet Union, he was soon to feel the political decline of his homeland the nation that had assured the astronaut that it would bring him back to Earth no longer existed. So, in the end, those responsible had no choice but to inform Krikalev that his stay in space would be extended indefinitely. As a result of the coup d'etat that led to the end of the Soviet Union, the government simply no longer had the funds to get the cosmonaut home. So Krikalev was asked again and again to be patient for a while. Weeks went by without anyone being able to tell the cosmonaut when he would feel earthly ground under his feet again. Because of the immense difficulties the state was in at that time, the people in charge thought it best to save as much money as possible. Theoretically, it would have been possible for the cosmonaut left in space to return to Earth on his own. To do so, he would simply have had to climb into the small emergency space capsule that was on board Mir. However, this decision would also have inevitably led to the end of the complex space station. Since Krikalev was the only person on board, there would have been no one left to control Mir's sensitive systems. As more and more months dragged on, the cosmonaut began to wonder how much longer he would be able to endure the grueling stay in space. After all, such a long mission in space is always associated with high health risks. Weakening on the muscles, the negative effects of the high radiation levels in space, and an increased risk of cancer are just some of the potential dangers in space. When the cosmonaut was finally brought back to Earth, he had spent a full 311 days on Mir. The original schedule of the mission provided for a stay of only five months. Particularly curious, since Russia urgently needed financial means due to hyperinflation, they sold the free places in their rockets to inhabitants of Western countries. On March 25th, Krikalev was finally to return to our blue home planet. However, the unexpectedly long stay in space had left clear traces on the cosmonaut. Krikalev made an extremely worn out impression after his return. Four men were needed to help the man get to his feet. Thereupon, Krikalev was given some broth and a warming coat. 
the fact that the Mir space station was not left to its own devices was thanks to the German astronaut, Klaus Dietrich Flade. Earlier, Germany had raised $24 million to send Flade to Mir as a relief. Despite this incident, Krikalev's love of spaceflight never lessened. Just two years after his unexpectedly long stay in space, he left his earthly home again. In the process, Krikalev became the first Russian in history to fly in a NASA shuttle. And a few years later, he earned the title of the first human on the ISS. Currently, Krikalev works as deputy director of the Central Research Institute of Mechanical Engineering. Now it's your turn. What are your thoughts on today's video? Just tell us in the comments. Feel free to check out the other exciting posts on our channel that we've linked for you in the credits. Thanks for watching, take care, and we'll see you next time.